Just want to give you a bit of breaking news. Now, Ontario is set to table its budget March 28th, but the finance minister says it won't be a balanced budget. Uh, Charles Souza wouldn't say how much the deficit will be. Um, he's talking about investing in health care and child care. But I, I haven't got the timetable here, but uh, CP arguing that this goes back on a key promise, doesn't fulfill a key promise the Liberal government made to balance the books. So Ontario won't balance the budget. Colin in Sarnia, on, oh, well, David, just very quickly, I mean, uh, governments are under fire. I mean, the economy's not in a recession, so why are you running deficits? Well, you know, this is the crazy thing, is that we've been in a pretty good economy, and to be running a deficit when you're in a, in a pretty good economy, what does it mean if things slow down? So I'm not sure when running a budget stop meaning balancing a budget, uh, and especially when that's the, that's the promise that was made. We've got Colin in Sarnia, Ontario. Go ahead, please. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Hi, Thank sir. you for taking my call. David, I really do enjoy your narratives, and I, like you, believe there's a bull market well into the 20s, but with the chaos going on, would you adjust your narrative about the near-term future, and do you see any emerging themes or global areas? Yeah that are opening up. So, so Colin, you know, I think it's a, it's a really interesting question. When you go through a period like the period between 2000 and 2013, where you had several cyclical rallies and declines, but nothing that was persistent, you, you get used to, to steady rotation from group to group and sector to sector. And when you get into a structural bull market, you take that experience forward, and it tends to be that st people start to always look for what's next, what's next, what's next. And in a structural bull market, what works continues to work. And um, I said, said uh, on Twitter a little while ago, the hardest thing in a bear market is to be a good seller. The hardest thing in a bull market is to hold on to your winning positions. So it's very clear to me right now that the themes that have been leading this market continue to lead. There has been no damage in tech. There has been no damage in financials. There has been very little damage in industrials. Uh, med tech and biotech performing really well so it's more of the same so what I would say to you is that when you get into a bull market the first stock that doubles is likely the first one that doubles again hmm. so you, you, you want to watch for a clear change in trend which we have not seen we saw a short sharp pullback which resets people's expectations but don't go looking for change where it doesn't exist so as it stands right now, there are clear structural tailwinds to technology. You know, the Internet of Things and cloud-based computing and software as a service, they're still in the early days. Robots, it's still the early, early days. So um, I would say stay with what's working. On the other hand, the things that have recently stopped working, like utilities and telcos and REITs uh, and consumer staples, we've had 35 years of falling interest rates to build our habit in believing that those are the places we want to be. And when rates start to rise, those are not the places to be. So I would just don't get caught in buying a bounce in those things. Actually, if you own them, use the bounces to become a seller. William in Edmonton, go ahead, please. Uh, hello, gentlemen. Hi there. Interested in uh, your guest's opinion about Kushtar uh, okay. Class B. I'll hang up and uh, listen. Thank Thanks you very much. So um, when you're in a relatively strong market, it's very important to understand what's working. And it's always also important to ask yourself why what you hold isn't working. And so because we have stronger and accelerating economies around the world, investors are more interested in things that have more cyclical earnings and things that are less predictable. And, and Kushtard is one of those companies that sort of grinds its, grinds its way along. Uh, I think it's growing each uh, quarter, uh, you know, a little every quarter. Mm -hmm. uh, but the fact is, if you look over the last year, it's done better than just over 50% of the stocks in the market. So it's solidly in the middle of the pack. Mm -hmm. And that's not improving. So I think that you have to be a little bit ruthless in a bull market. And just like when things aren't working and selling off in a bear market, you've got to stop your way out. You have to trade up in a bull market. Mm -hmm. To the real trade up, trade up to what's really working. We only get these markets once in a while, yeah. right? So you've got to look for your opportunities. When the market pulled back, you wanted to look at 
what is it that comes back right away to, to back towards the highs? And there's some of the themes that we're talking about today have done that, financials and technology in particular. So I'd be hunting in those camps, and I think that the, tech, the technology theme has years to go. The financials theme, especially in the U.S., has years to go. And, um, you know, I, I think that that's what I would focus on. This is sort of an also ran right now. The stock's a bit broken technically. The sector's kind of out of favor. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you should move on. From Kush Charge. Okay. We're going to be back with David Burrows, and he's taking your questions on North American large caps, one 326 6266